that's what they would never do for a sci-fi film. They would never do a sci-fi film about how Jimmy Savile is received in heaven as a legend. <laughs> that's more of a biblical kind of theological tale, no? Not sci-fi. Huh? God grips him by the hand and he says, by Well God, done, you, by Joe. You had, you had a dark streak, but you were one hell of an entertainer. And in heaven, we value that more than anything. I'm not going to overlook all the kitty fiddling, Jimmy, but... You know what? Welcome, welcome to paradise. Look, here's That's how That's not going to get made into a You movie. got away with it by man's law, so you get away with it by <laughs> God's law. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're, if you're in prison and you die, you go to hell. Even if you were in prison for, like, a traffic violation and you had two days left to serve, if you die in prison, you go to hell. Yeah, if the man's done here, you're fucked. Yeah, but if, if you get out, it doesn't matter what you've done then straight to heaven. Right. Basically, heaven is just, are you free at the time of death? <laughs> <laughs> I died a free man with the blood of many on my hands, but there you go. You know, I guess if, if there was kind of, you know, this this completely unarguable uh, evidence that, oh, I know, oh, I suppose some people are going to argue there is, but uh, if there was some completely inarguable evidence that, you know, there is a heaven and hell, you know, if, if God literally did, you know, pull the pull the sky apart and made it very clear what the situation was, I don't know. I think people would just live in constant terror, like uh, you know, <laughs> going, oscillating between worship and self-flagellation. I mean that that is that is the true dictator state, isn't it? I suppose so. Yeah. You know, ultimate theocracy, like a literal theocracy where God is in charge, not people <laughs> who believe in him, but God. <laughs> like you can see him sat at his desk wherever you are on the planet. You know, he's you know, fucking you, huge. You can't be a sycophant or anything. He knows what you're thinking. <laughs> he knows your heart isn't pure. <laughs> He's always giving you a fucking dirty look. <laughs> He's he having none of he it. He knows He's... what you're thinking and he's just like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like fascist or anything. He'll just really shame you for everything you do. I mean, he's he'll not broadcast. Fascist. He just, just doesn't take any shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, welcome to the George Rockleshmith Show. Damien, I'm very ill today, which is the future. Oh, how seamless. <laughs> oh, so it's terminal. It's terminal. <laughs> yes, I suppose all life is terminal, isn't oh, it? Oh, dear. How are you? I'm all right. I'm very, I'm very coldy. I'm very nasally. I'm very, oh yeah, well, and ill on top of all of that. Um, uh, so I guess today we're going to be talking about sci-fi films that they would never make. Maybe sci-fi films they could never make. Uh, sci-fi films they may not have make. Uh, <laughs> they may not have make. Did you say? They might not, may not have have made us. They may not have have make us. Um, but before we do that, I was watching a a like network ad for a, a Mexican network. Uh, where they they have loads of you know loads of TV series from lots of other places, and you know you know how these compilation ads are they they show a bit of this it's someone smiling at the camera, then you've got somebody going oh los locos para horse or some shit like that, and it's got another clip and one of these clips all of it's dubbed one of these clips is Kev- Kevin Spacey sitting back. And and like some some Mexican voice going, mm, muy bueno, and then a fucking halo appears around his head. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, and it's the House of Cards because it's still on. Oh dear. Uh, still on whatever Mexican network. Oh fucking Christ on the bike! Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just looking at something here. Netflix losses from Kevin Spacey scandal revealed. <laughs> it has announced a write down of thirty nine million dollars for its physical fourth quarter. Largely due to projects affected by the Kevin Spacey sexual misconduct scandal. Fucking hellfire. There's that misconduct word again. Yeah. Fucking so Damien, sci-fi films there. with Kevin Spacey in it. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> the ones that they all obviously never, ever make now. <laughs> so, what, um, yeah, we did. We got started on this, uh, um, I think, shortly after we finished recording the, the last one. What did we say was happening? So we, it's we, always gonna, the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's the golden time. As soon as yeah. we hit the fucking red button a second Stop time, button. that's when the entertainment really starts. But there are just people prior there to are, recording as well. There are, pe- there are people crowded around the wireless <laughs> listening to this, and they're like, <laughs> "What? What makes George and Damien so charismatic is you know that most of the funny stuff they say we never hear." <laughs> It's, but we know in spirit. You know, we we, we can know in spirit. It. We can tell that they're funny people. They just refuse to be funny. <laughs> Throw another shard of coal on the fire so we might live another hour. <laughs> <laughs> the 
they refuse to be funny. It's not even like, oh, yeah, see, this is kind of funny. Of it's a bit, it's a bit mundane. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, these, this is utterly straight. I mean, usually, the, the, but then the as soon as we stop joke. recording, <laughs> uh, what this podcast needs is more elevator music. Oh yeah. We, we or better, better co-hosts. I don't know. <laughs> better production values. Better, better content. Better, better, you know. More, more effort. More effort. Better preparation. Uh, yeah, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> so, uh, so our idea was, I seem to remember, there's a huge uh, ship over a city, much like in District Nine, and you know they they pull it in. It's a it's a whole thing. People are saying, "Oh my goodness, it's a spaceship." They pull it, they pull it in, they open it, and it's full of androids who are all Kevin Spacey. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, that, that, is that, that what that our idea it, yeah. was? Yeah, I think we got onto after that fucking Call of Duty thing. We're talking about. Um, fucking uncanny valley, Spacey, with the fucking, with the monkey wrench. I well, I seem to remember this. We we started by saying that Kevin Spacey, the Kevin Spacey robots pour out of this ship, and it's the only film where there's a meeting between a politician and a general, and maybe someone else, on, you know, on a conference call, and there's no conflict at all. They're all saying like, let's immediately evacuate evacuate the city. You know, there's no mayor saying, oh no, that'll destroy our tourism or anything. There's no there's no one saying, no, 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 this is far too ru- rushed. Like the general saying, yeah, I can get the army in here in 15 minutes. And the, you know, the governor is saying, yeah, please, please get the army in. I'll, you know, absolutely, I'll sign off on martial law right now. Like, Mr. President, what, you, what do you do? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm authorized to use nuclear ordnance. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just completely agreed. It's like attack plan R, we're doing this right now. <laughs> like, we have this huge, long fucking drawn out sequence of this of this ship approaching um, and it fully blows its load on the fuck when it lands, and you have this. The ramp comes down. You got the mist, and Kevin Spacey. Will as it, as you know, as it, as the mist dissipates, you slowly see this this first uh, this first android march forward, um, and it does this slow pull up, and you see the likeness of Kevin Spacey, and immediately, right. Like the people that immediately are there. a siren, immediately. <laughs> like the crowd is so um, oh, well, so immediate, so, so immediate, so acute that you know that the yes, I mean, whatever city it touch, touches down on, like the populace think as one. It's incredible. Yeah, um, nothing has unified people so. No, it it it's got to, it's got to be like. Like there's an image of Kevin Spacey, then there's an image of like a mother and child in this crowd, like their look of horror, and they immediately start to run. Then it immediately cuts to like a U.S. combat engineer, like to- saying to someone, like as you can hear machine guns in the background, to, like saying to someone, "Yeah, we can pull down uh, the Freedom Tower in New York right now, and that will create an artificial barricade to stop them. <laughs> it, it'll slow them down by like twenty minutes. It's totally worth it." <laughs> They're just trying to bury them in the fucking city. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, oh no, they're 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 more than willing to write Manhattan off. <laughs> and it, you know, in and amongst all this panic, like how you know, the National Guard they mo- mobilize faster in you know than any other military operation you know you know to date at this point. And it cuts back to the spacey robots. And what we haven't seen up until this point <laughs> is that even though the ship itself is it's magnificently massive. fucking advanced, all this kind of stuff, the robots themselves, we don't, even though we haven't kind of like made contact, we just, uh, we're not quite sure just, the, you know, what their intentions are. They are quite remedial, remedial in, in their movement. And they I just thought, I th- okay. I didn't think it was that. I thought I thought the twist was they're like they're robots, yeah. But there's only twelve of them. <laughs> well, we can get to that. Yeah. Okay. All right. But I just think that you know, in and amongst everyone, they're running, like clockwork men, are they? Yeah. Well, not clockwork. I mean, they can they they look they they are they're dead Kevin Spacey ringers. They just don't move very fast. They've just barely cleared the ramp at this point. You know, it's like eight hours into this crisis. And they have, you know, they're not within range of you know harming anybody yet. Like people run away from them like it's alien, like in the ducks crawling after them. After them, but actually they can only like they can only move slightly faster than you can walk. Yeah, yeah, we can we can just they can clock in about two miles an hour. Really, it's actually quite pitiful. But if you get caught, you know, if you get caught, if you are in their grasp, you are fucking totaled. Everywhere is a casting couch to them. <laughs> Oh my god! (laughs) 
fucking hell, that's vile. (laughs) 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 Jesus Christ. Uh Oh, fucking hell. (laughs) You've got all all these... All these images of like people getting like kind of cornered by them and like immediately, not even thinking about it, immediately shooting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no, there's no like national warning. There's no news flash. There's no like you've got to shoot them in the head moment. It's all just people just know what to do. <laughs> Don't let them take you alive. Don't let them take you alive. Make sure that you suffocate your children before the spacey bot get in, gets into your house. If you can destroy your remains as well, that's that's <laughs> ideal. Don't give them anything. <laughs> they will Flesh desecrate fuel. anything. <laughs> you have you can have this glorious montage of these. What well, we said? What twelve spacey robots sto- slowly storming these homes and uh, just violating violating the corpses of these families. Why did we choose twelve? Is it like is, no, but- so is, it, is it like they're the apostles and the real spacey is Jesus? Oh, I didn't. We weren't going for that, I don't think. But we can maybe play around with that. Or no, maybe it shouldn't be like that as well. Maybe just twelve is the number we landed on, and it's all like, "This is January, Spacey. This is August, Spacey." (laughs) Absolutely no difference whatsoever. Absolutely no difference. But like January, Spacey is dressed as a fireman, and August, Spacey is dressed as a veterinarian. So, all right, so we've got these spacey robots. They come down as the YMCA, is that right? Village people, yeah. fucking hell. They come down, no, they come down as a YMCA. <laughs> that, that's, their, that's, their only, that's their only camouflage, is like all of them together look like, like you know, kind of like a, a 400 room YMCA. All right, so they kind of do like this Power Rangers kind of morphing thing when they kind of climb on top of each other. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think this is, this is too ridiculous, but I think it would be completely acceptable if their catchphrase, their universal catchphrase was the kind of a shouting style, you know, shouting young man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, how you can tell when they're approaching your village. You just Young hear. man, young man, <laughs> young man, young man. Like yeah. And the slow march. It's never said. It's, it's, always, it's always done as if it's, you know, part of that song. <laughs> it's just you a know, sample played over and over, it's over just, and over. Yeah, it's just it's you're constantly expecting, you know, the question afterwards. Oh, not the question. You know, you're just constantly after, constantly expecting afterwards. There's no need to feel down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the the true madness comes in because there's no resolution in the uh, in the in the verse. You you're just desperate to hear these lyrics and you never and you never do. A sci-fi film they would never make. You had something with Spacey. I'm kind of thinking broadly about any film ever that he's interacted with a child in. You could go back and you could you could have him interacted with a child. And you know you're watching this. You're watching this in 2025, right? This is years after the Kevin Spacey scandal. But everyone knows, and everyone you know, you watch Kevin Spacey now in 2025. It's still a bit uncomfortable. But even you know he's been dead for five years as well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, very dead as well. I mean, pulled apart dead. <laughs> he was lynched. They made a, <laughs> you know, society made a very special uh, exception in this case. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the Pope came out and was like, I, I normally would frown upon this, but... But, he, uh, you know, from over the balcony, he just throws a noose and everyone just, you know, <laughs> looks at each other and silently nods. Yeah, the Pope has chosen. Um, but, you know, what if what if you're watching it, what you, you know... You're watching some old film and, and Kevin Spacey leans down and he starts talking to a child. And, you know, you're thinking to yourself, maybe you talk to someone with you. Oh, this is a bit weird. But, you know, you know that this happened, you know, before the scandal came out and everything. And, you know, you know that this is a thing. But then the movie stops. Like the movie literally stops. And, and Robbie the robot, like, tears, tears a hole in, like, the space-time continuum of this movie. Comes out as if this movie was a real thing. And then... The only the only people in this movie who can who can see or move or anything because everything else is frozen is the child and Robbie the robot and Robbie the robot every time just leans into this child and says, "Run." <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a sort and then Ro- Robbie the robot like battles he ba- he battles Kevin the space Kevin the spacey he battles Kevin Spacey for as long as he can. 
to try <laughs> can... to try and give the child enough of a head start. <laughs> right, right. So it's not it's never the same Robbie the robot. You know, it's always something else. You know, the the same model of the you know of of, of a different line because he will you know he goes yeah, he in will kamikaze. Be destroyed. He, yeah. <laughs> it's the same brain, but like yeah. every time his body is destroyed. Yeah, he can never dominate Spacey. His his only you know his only resort is to get him in a death grip and like self detonate. But even so, that only buys that enough only buys time the child, child time. Yeah, only to escape. Danger, human child, danger. <laughs> So what we're, what we're saying then is is sci-fi movies that they would never make, space pedos. <laughs> yep, that's, okay. That's basically it. They wouldn't make that, would they? No, they would not make space pedos. I can, <laughs> I, I'm fairly certain of that. <laughs> what about space speedos? Oh, fuck. I'm sh- well, they've, got, they've got those movies already, no? I mean, like, we have kind of proto space speedos in, in the form of Zardoz. Yeah, yeah. I don't and know. I'm they were they were very terrestrial, really. I imagine though. I, I I've, I've got to imagine there must be fucking hundreds of fucking schlocky fucking B B uh, B movie sci fi movies from the eighties that will have more, all of that and more, no doubt. Yeah, any movie with with boots that go past a man's knee is oh, always yeah. a bit a bit suspect. I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching a bee movie and there was a bit where there was a revolution in this bee movie and like the person running around who was in charge of the revolution who wasn't like a main character or anything the person they had was like 20 and uh had like a 20 year old mustache and was wearing a beret and had like kind of like suede boots like I mean not just up to thighs but like as high as you can get on your thighs like they there must have been like suede on either side of this guy's bollocks Oh fucking hell Yeah that does sound like a bit of a nightmare yeah, I mean, he might as well have not worn trousers. Oh, fuck. <laughs> he could have just put these on nude and then put some shorts on over them. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> He's got a great big fucking smile on his face because that suede tickles his balls up nice. Because they, 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 you know, they fly up into the shorts. Yeah, no, for, that's for what I thought. For all intents yeah. and purposes, it just looks like tights with heels. Yeah, suspiciously on the end. Yeah, exactly, yeah, with hot pants over them. Oh dear! Sorry, who's wearing this? I think we should we should put a name to it. Tom Cruise. He's wearing <laughs> these these space shorts. Oh fuck off! So what? When you talk about this, uh, the space speedo movie is are the speedo? Is this the title, or are the are the speedos the crux of the movie, or is it just like an incidental like costume choice? So Sorry, some uh, kind of lawman in space and his, you know... Lawman? I, I thought we... Okay, yeah, all right. I mean, I'm okay for I'm okay for jumping into this, but what? I thought we were talking about, like, spacey bots. <laughs> spacey bots. We, well, no, but... I'm sorry, I thought we jumped onto something new when we talked about space speedos. Space I thought speedos. We, tied, we tied a nice... Uh, a, is, a it nice space, bow- is it space speedos or is it spaces pedos? <laughs> Spacey's pedos. <laughs> Some of my favourite films are sci-fi films, and yet at the same time, I feel as though most of the worst films I've ever seen have been sci-fi films as well. I completely agree. I mean, with I think with a horror film, like a really kind of you know B B movie horror film, if you can get the monster half a uh, half okay, then you've kind of I wouldn't say you've won because you can always kind of make it boring and everything, but that is that is your battle. Mm-hmm. You know, either make the monster good or, or film it in such a way where you don't see the monster. You know, all you have to do is create create dread and tension. Whereas sci-fi, you know, I think if, if you do want to write something where it's set on a spaceship... You have to kind of create mystery and excitement. And... Well, you have to make the spaceship look like a spaceship. <laughs> it, it can't look, you know, like you've put tinfoil on your walls. I, th- I, you know, I, th- I think, I, you know, I think that that props and everything are, are much harder in sci-fi, and, and sci-fi is, is often kind of so. Um, I mean, I, I, I was going to say experimental, but I think that almost sounds too. I don't know. I, can't, I think I'm kind of overshooting the problem. I just, I just think sci-fi attracts a lot of weirdos who aren't aren't good at telling stories and don't really want to tell stories. They want to say things like, "Oh yeah, but what is the future?" What, what if what, <laughs> that's what, it, if, what if the future? What, oh. what if the future? 
Oh, wh- what if what if women are, are what if women are the currency of the future? Oh, I, j- I just I... think it's a lot of weird stuff, which which is kind of like, well, yeah, that's an interesting idea to talk about for five minutes, but don't make it into a film. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I I've definitely seen uh, quite a few of these movies that um, I think like the idea killer came... clowns from outer space, <laughs> <laughs> like someone's got an idea, um, but with no no prior experience or training in kind of screenwriting whatsoever. Brave New World is is this kind of staple of science fiction, mm-hmm. but a, lo- a lot of that book is kind of exploring what society would be like. Um, uh, you know, it does have a story to it, uh, and and I think the story is interesting. But for me, at least, Brave New World is much more about what genetic exploration and and you know scientific accomplishment will mean for society. It's it's mu- it's much more. Ki- it's almost like a like a like an essay that's presented with a narrative almost. Okay, right. There's this really fascinating book that I read called Last and First Men by Olaf Stapledon. And um I'm sure I'm sure for sci fi lovers it's quite well known. All it is is it's kind of it's kind of like a history of the different ages of, of not of mankind, but almost of different mankinds. Like the the first kind of incarnation of man destroys itself, then over millions or years or whatever a second man emerges, and then a third man, and then there's the fourth man, which is almost cat-like, and then there's like a fourteenth man eventually, which is really brutish, and then there's a fifteenth man, and there's no there's no character which is, remains. Is this, it's, it's a is history. this passage directly lifted from the book? What? <laughs> and then there was the fourteenth man, and then the fifteenth. Are you saying 16th. my explanation of this is boring, Damien? <laughs> Not at all, not at all, not at all. I remember when I was in the sixth grade, we had to write some stuff uh, for for school, like write a little half-page story, and, and this kid wrote something, and uh, the teacher didn't like him, so she decided that she would she would write this down on overhead project, projection plastic, write his story down in her own handwriting, and then put it up, and then read it and mock it. Uh, you know, she would call it dissecting it, I guess, and showing where he went wrong, but it was definitely uh, definitely a form of bullying. <laughs> yeah, it's just a memory that I've like suppressed as I know <laughs> it wasn't you. But um she said like I'm not going to say the name of the the person who wrote this, but everyone knew who it was because they started turning bright red. I mean, how fucking humiliating. Um but he started this story talking about like a motorbike and then the man jumped over the wall and then he got onto a motorbike and then he pressed go on the motorbike and it went. <laughs> The problem was, was I was in university, and this kind of this level of work was was definitely should have been frowned upon. You know, I, I was I was uh, I was a lit grad. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it it kind of is like that. It's it's much more about the ideas in this book, first and last men, last and first men. Sorry, it's much more about the ideas than the literature. Do you think they'd ever make a movie out of Minecraft? Minecraft. Oh, without a shit, without a shadow of a doubt. And it's super reflective, and it starts with, even the greatest stars despise <laughs> themselves in the looking glass. It's super sad. <laughs> like, even even when the main character ends up on the autobahn, it's still the sad version of that song. <laughs> it's just one man just digging a deeper hole. It's very sad. All like all these executives sit around and they're like, well, "What what makes what makes Minecraft popular?" Well, you know, you've got all the, all these memes. Mm, no, 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 no. Well, what about the pickaxe? The iconic pickaxe? No, no, no. Oh well, uh, you know, well, uh, um, uh, maybe maybe the way it looks. Maybe we should make it animated. No, 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 no. I think that what what Minecraft makes what what makes Minecraft popular and what people would appreciate is if if this is almost a Ingmar Bergman film which captures the hauntingness of Minecraft, that will sell $400 million worth of box office tickets. <laughs> if, 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 if the tagline is, it's Minecraft, it's three and a half hours, and it's very sad, bring your kids. All it is is just footage of people playing Minecraft, but not over the shoulder. It's you just see these people's faces as they're you know, completely ca- captured by it. <laughs> like, held prisoner, prisoner of the mind, you know. Okay, so I think I think we are kind of actually coming onto the subject for once, uh, <laughs> which, which is sci-fi. Sci-fi they wouldn't make. I think it would be genuinely difficult to make a introspective sci-fi film that doesn't have any action. I mean, you know, people talk about 
uh, all these sci-fi films having great ideas, but I, it, it seems to me they they're hinged on their action. They you know their action is what is used to pull people in. Oh yeah, without a sh- yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, um, I think as much as a lot of people kind of, what would you say, kind of accepting a lot of the uh, that comic book and sci-fi culture, I still think for it to be kind of mainstream, it's uh, they still, they, I wouldn't say this stuff, you know, of itself is 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 higher brow. I'm not that familiar with it. I couldn't say one way or the other, but um, I definitely feel like to keep bringing people in, they do still keep it very very flashy, and like very flashy. The, I mean, you know, pe- people say, and, uh, you know, I definitely understand why people say this, but people say, oh, look at 2001, A Space Odyssey. You could never make that now because it's 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 so slow and it's so um, it's so kind of not action based. This is Dave and he's he's running and this is a tracking shot and this is it. This is what we're going to watch for the next 20 seconds. A little bit well, more than 20 seconds, but yeah. <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, like, maybe that one shot, I can't remember, but maybe that one particular shot, maybe that's a 20-second shot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think, yeah, legitimately, back in back in the day, in 1968, people would watch that, and maybe they'd think, yeah, that's a long shot, but okay. Whereas I think now, that would be, like, peculiarly long. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you'd have to be like, well, let's do a cutaway of his eyes, and let's do a cutaway of his shoelaces, and let's do a cutaway of of a steady cam that we've attached to his wrist so you can see his arm isn't moving but the background is or some shit like that. Um but you know I you hear a lot of people say well they couldn't make that now and I I think think that's probably true practically but there's definitely an audience that would consume that. There's still pe- still a lot of people who really respect that sort of stuff. I think if you could make a sci-fi movie that that was really intelligent and didn't kind of you know, end up end up boiling down to a laser battle. I think there would be an audience for that. I would definitely like to see another two thousand and one. Oh yeah, without shadow. I was because while you were talking about, it, I was trying to think of uh, movies that are all kind of in that uh, that ballpark. But then you know, the, the movies that I can kind of think of, um, those kind of more kind of concept sort of uh, sci fi movies, um, for lack of a better term. I kept thinking of things like Soylent Green and. Uh, uh, what, was, what was the other one? The, yeah, the Parallax View. There was another one I was thinking of, and I can't the, the names escape me. But I realized these are all kind of titles from like the, you know, the seventies and stuff like yeah. that. I haven't really, I haven't really. I'm not saying they're not out there. Just I haven't encountered anything kind of, you know, that kind of suits that, you know, that fits that um, criteria. That's not, you know, a good thirty, forty years old. It's nothing I've seen made, you know, recently. So yeah, if you look at the thing and you look at life. Okay, so they're both sci-fi movies, and they're both uh, ab- they're both about people who are in isolated environments, and they have to deal with something mm-hmm. that takes over you, or you know. And I, I know they are different, but the thing's action sequences, you know, McCready never needs to he never needs to jump through a window and then get get into a moving helicopter and then get on the machine gun and then you know and, and then kind of do this death-defying shit. It's it's very much kind of like fuck. I need to light the flamethrower before this thing gets bigger. Yeah, he just has to look fucking, you know, terrified. He has to look terrified. And, and, you know, you can argue that a good sci-fi film is more about its story and it's with a sci-fi setting, maybe. And and certainly that's what both of those could be. But The Thing does it so much better because because I think its sci-fi element is much more incidental, in, in a way. You know, okay, so so Alien is, is definitely definitely a sci-fi film. You know, maybe you can argue with The Thing it's more horror. Uh, right, okay. The a- alien, alien is at least sci-fi horror because it's it's set on a spaceship. It's got an android and all of that, <laughs> but it's not it's not about that. It's it's never about it's never about these are the mechanics of space. These the this is the mechanic of the future. You know this is the reason these corporations have so much power. These you know this is what we're mining. These are the applications. It's never about that. It's all just these people are isolated. It happens to be because they're on a spaceship. <sighs> What would you call it? Just um... well, well. My my point is okay. So my point is is Interstellar. I mean, what is Interstellar? Interstellar is an action film that you know that is also incidentally a sci-fi. Uh, and I I don't know. I th- I think that you know now as with maybe most genres. I mean, I know I, I sound so kind of down on film on new film, but I think with most genres, I think it's it's very much lowest lowest common denominator. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's like you could definitely swap out a few um, tropes and props with these movies and they could very easily be recognised as a different kind of genre. 
Yeah. Nothing kind of, you know, science fiction in and of itself. <coughs> so maybe what we're saying is the sci-fi movie that they won't make is an actual science fiction movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you remember Primer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's much pointed to as kind of like a thinking thinking man sci-fi, uh, which it is. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think Primer is particularly, uh, particularly new or particularly brave in what it's doing. I think it's, it's just, it's not stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that, that is arguably, you know, brave in and of itself. I think you're right. Yeah, I think, so. <laughs> I think that's what we're saying, isn't it? There's, there's a book here called The Mount. Uh, and it was a, it's a book that came out in 2002. It's a sci-fi book. And it's about um, human beings being used as mounts, as steeds for a, an alien race. That's exploring issues that that I think most sci-fi wouldn't touch. I think most sci-fi now, oh, most, most big mainstream sci-fi is what I mean. I think most sci-fi is, is much more about there's an alien on the ship. And even then, it kind of, it kind of loses what Alien had in there's an alien on the ship because... You know, Alien was all about how these people come together or don't under pressure. And, you know, mm-hmm. Alien is brilliant because it's like watching an emergency unfold in front of you. And these people... <laughs> because, because, but the thing is, is, is those people, like, they don't fuck everything up. They, you know, they do things which make a lot of sense, but things go wrong. And that's what's fascinating. Mm-hmm. You know, they're totally believable. And I, I don't know, I just get the sense that, you know, you, you're never going to have um, a Soylent Green again where you've got this beautiful background of overpopulation ideas and things like that and y- y- oh, i definitely y- feel like you'll get like you know mounts made into a, a, a movie but it'll be it'll be so fucking heavy-handed it'll, it'll be the human centipede no no i'm kind of thinking it's this allegory for like you know pe- people as cattle and it's kind of you know you've got all these kind of animal rights that you know advocate kind of advocacy groups kind of really kind of driving a point home about how we you know treat well treat animals yeah, I th- I think that movie could quite happily come, but it won't be anywhere near as satisfying or interesting as like as the uh, concept there you're talking about. Yeah, a good a good high concept sci fi movie. I yeah, I I don't know. A good high concept movie it seems to be out of out of the grasp of mainstream movies now. Mm. You know, I, I it's not like I don't like spectacle or anything. It's not like I don't like action. Um, I, do you know what? I remember I remember a film called The Sixth Day. Do you remember that with Arnie? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the Sixth Day, as I seem to remember, I haven't seen it in at least 10 years, but it's a, it's a quite schlocky sci-fi action film where Arnie gets, Arnie gets cloned for some reason and then, uh, you know, he, he beats the baddies. But there's quite a lot of interesting stuff about clones and, you know, the rights of clones and stuff. But there's a moment where... You find out that the baddies keep coming coming back because they get cloned. They're killed and then their clone takes their place. But right. the clone the clone isn't them. The clone is its own thing. It's got their memories, but it isn't them. Right, okay. It, you know, so you've got I mean, that's interesting in itself. But there's a bit where like the the uh, the head bad man uh <laughs> is is dying. I think that's the, the academic term, the head bad man. Uh where the antagonist is dying and uh he he gets his clone out before it's ready and his clone's Ooh, kind of all fucked and everything. But then his clone kind of like starts undressing him as he's dying. Right. And he's saying, can't you wait, wait until I'm dead? And the clone says, would you? And then the clone's dressed and everything. And I, I think that's a really interesting thing in that movie because the movie's kind of quite dumb, usually, you know, for most of it. But that's an interesting idea because it's this idea that you've created an exact copy of you, but it isn't you. Mm-hmm. You know, and kind of maybe as incidental as it is, that is that is some there is some thought about identity there. Uh, it, I mean, it got me thinking anyway. Yeah, um, one that all, that kind of got me, which I suppose is very similar in that regard, is the Prestige. And, right, uh, and obviously every time I th- I, that uh, Hugh Jackman's cloning himself, one of them, uh, one of the clones ends up th- in this well was- drowned. Basically, right? Yeah, that is good, isn't it? I forgot all about that because there's another one as well with um, uh, the, 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 why do I want to say Norman? That doesn't make sense with that actor Norton, Graham Norton, that actor Graham Norton, Ed Norton. Oh yeah, the Illusionist, the Illusionist, which is nowhere near the same fucking thing. It's just... No, 
It's kind right. of like I'm a magician, and I've, I think some kind of like forbidden love story or something like that. That's right. It you knew it wasn't a good film when he didn't say Izzy Wizzy. <laughs> <laughs> but he brought it back when he said, "Let's get busy." Yeah. Like two percent of the audience is kind of fucking understand that. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you're gonna leave it in. Yeah, so in in Britain there was this uh, there was this puppet uh, called Sooty. Um, it was very racist because the puppet. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, so I guess what we're saying is, uh, sci-fi films they would never make. Prob- yeah, probably kind of low action, low action. Uh, Thinking man sci-fi films that are more, more even you know, not boring films, but more about building up tension and more about ideas. I mean, certainly you know the the, the traditional B movie where it's all about a scientist in well in a soundstage that kind of looks like a laboratory mm-hmm. trying to work shit out. I mean, that's long gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, I I don't think that that's a bad thing that it's gone. I think you know we've evolved past that. I quite like the spirit of those movies because they are they do seem genuinely curious about science often. Mm-hmm. Whereas kind of like, especially with Interstellar, I mean, I think a lot of it was like, no, but like I, I, I looked on Wikipedia and like the closer you get to like a black hole or something like that, like the the, the more distorted time becomes. I mean, that sounds great. I, you okay. know, I guess, I guess you, sh- you, you know, sci-fi, you don't really need to explain it usually. Yeah, I would, I would suppose so. I mean, I think what, what I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm not, like, not going to, I'm not going to look at Alien and go, what? There are 186 light years from Earth. That's impossible. <laughs> because that would take so the- long that they would be dead. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> look, this this movie makes no sense. Here's how how Alien should have gone. Like the movie starts up right, and the ships. Empty. They're all dead, right? Because that makes sense. That's that why makes sense. Said, <laughs> They're all dead. Right? It's ninety minutes of this, right? It just slow pans down the corridor. Nothing. You hear Jeff, absolutely nothing. Jeff Goldblum gets into the teleporter, comes out for the first time. Everything's fine. You press space bar. You stand in front of the screen and you say, "Actually, if you think about it, all it's done is transfer data. So although he may look the same, he's technically a completely different person and has died during the teleport." teleportation process and a new person in his image has been reborn like it doesn't <laughs> fucking matter right yeah again it's all this in, it's all incidental but anyway anyway i always quite like that um that notion uh what when you kind of use that to reframe star trek and you just see these people murdering each other over and over and over again i'm gonna beam you up i mean i know it's gonna i know you're gonna end but i need a first i need a first officer on my ship right now <laughs> like these people right they do feel the pain of death you know in that in that form but the, well, there is a different conscious simultaneously that simply picks up exactly where they left off with the same memory it's they slowly, don't they don't have any memory memory of their own death as it were but they are slowly, dying slowly decays their mind over the time they do it they don't die they just decay and it's oh, like yeah. it's like it's so that you've got like two Ferengi or something sat in the in the Enterprise bar and they're like Oh shit! Riker's got teleportation brain. What makes you say that? Look at the way he's sitting. <laughs> Fuck, you're right. <laughs> oh dear. Well played, sir. Well played. I don't think that needs any context. Patrick, I think St- Patrick St- <laughs> Stewart starts reading these lines from from Godot, and then suddenly. He's got the suddenly the first officer isn't Riker. Riker's dead. It's suddenly inexplicably Ian McKellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and you know, you get this like letter to the admiral. And it says like we we don't you know it's none of our business. But uh, there's a new first officer called uh, First Officer McKellen, and uh, we think he's kind of Picard's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say anything. Uh, okay, so I guess I guess apart from kind of doing a sci-fi that we would actually like, other sci-fi films they wouldn't make. Um, I mean, I guess they wouldn't do anything particularly racy. I mean, by racy, I mean like actual like you race. Know. Right. Well, okay. like ni- in nineteen ninety-three, Ethiopia became self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 not black people. It's people who are born in Ethiopia. Doesn't right. matter, you know. 
you could be oh, like, I you two, meant like you could a be two Swedish people. Itself. You come to Ethiopia, you have your baby. That baby is part of the Ethiopia collective consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> and if they cross the borders, are they? Do they break that bond, or can they travel out? Can they travel outside? Can they assimilate others? Do you? If you cross that border, do you become? Oh, that's interesting. Like if you, if you leave Ethiopia, does it? Does the collective consciousness fail? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you or, mean. And or if you, just if just you one fly over it even, do you become part of it? Yeah, I understand. So you could have a whole sequence where like someone goes in on a rope. <laughs> and then they have to get dragged back in, sort of thing. Right, okay. Or, they're, or, they're, or they drag it back in, but then they're like, I can't see them because of all this bloody Ethiopian fog. <laughs> Typical misty Ethiopian morning, and then they they drag this rope in, and the rope's been severed, and they're like, oh no, where's Willy? Yeah, I, don't, I think that this might need a, quite a bit of workshopping because I don't think it's going to quite make it uh, to production. I mean, I want to say that you can't have, you can't really do race in sci-fi, but obviously Planet of the Apes did. I mean, yeah. I mean, sci-fi now, I guess you've got to be pretty careful, but I don't know, maybe not. I don't feel feel like I'm equipped to answer that question. All right, well, okay, what other sci-fi films would they not make? Well, okay, to kind of take us on a different different uh, track here, um, I don't think that there will be any more films like Battlefield Earth. I don't think there will be any more like weird Scientology movies anymore or or movies that have kind of that angle or anything like that. I think that is done. Uh, definitely not on that kind of scale. Yeah. Uh, available to that kind of audience, I don't think. Um, I think fucking Travolta was kind of laughed at for quite a long time for that. And, and uh, I mean, he's done it. I don't think anyone's going to repeat that mistake. Right, and I, I and I think a, a lot of films with sloppy monsters or floppy monsters uh, are, are more or less done. I think you know c- CGI is is definitely where it's at in terms of character creation. Oh, well, you say that though, but I think I've, I heard they're doing a remake of The Blob. <laughs> yeah, but I told you, Damien, it's about a woman who's got some really <laughs> bad cramps. <laughs> oh, another cheap shot, it's but about I, I, I like it. Ah, oh. they wanted to call it Dam Busters, but it, you know, it, uh, oh! <laughs> it infringed on another on another movie. They wanted to call it the Decorators. <laughs> you can make a film where uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Matt Damon are two hitmen called the Decorators, and the the tagline is they'll make your the tagline Come is on, they'll make through. your bedroom bloody. <laughs> Do you, do you not think Oliver Stone will do a film about Trump? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Do you know who they should get to play Donald Trump in the Trump film? Go on. Jonah Hill. Really? Oh, okay. Do you not think? Yeah, I, I can I can kind of see. Yeah, okay. That would be really fucking interesting. And do you know who they should get to play Barack Obama in that hill, in that hill, in that film? Go on. Fucking Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Wouldn't he be great? He's a nice actor. It's just <laughs> actors I like now. <laughs> and do you know who should play Hillary Clinton? That Meryl Streep. I was going to say Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. What about a sci-fi movie where Skynet sends a, a merciless robot back in time to kill Kevin Spacey's mom? <laughs> sci-fi films they could never make unless they had the genius of Neil Breen. <laughs> Because now I'm thinking about like Cyber Jesus and stuff like that. We've still got one more, one more delightful movie to kind of fucking crack on with with uh, Mr. Brains. I suppose it fucking Fateful Findings. Have you seen that? I have seen that. I saw it the other day. You actually, you actually watched the movie. I only. I actually, of... I actually watched it. Yeah, it was, it was very terrifying. Is it more of the same, or is it? Is it it's it... more of the more of the same, but he appears more lonely now. Oh, like really? he's he's more of a dangerous narcissist. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's, there's, like there's five, a lot more kind of heavy petting. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you still have any of those kind of like pool images with the fucking tense butts? No, but you do see his. You do see his butt. You just don't see any bollocks this time. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I suppose no. that's. I imagine that's the only concession he made to. That can to be. His that audience. can be my my five star review on his DVD. Like not as much bollocks. <laughs> there's still some, but you know, it's within <laughs> the bounds of propriety. You know, like you know, like human beings are human beings share fifty percent of their DNA with bananas. 
Like a banana has 50%. 50% of its DNA is exactly the same as a human being's DNA. Yeah, I'm not going to question this. Go on. Like, Neil Breen, he, he must be, like... At least 70% banana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he must be slightly more banana than most people. <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't make a sci-fi movie where they, where they shrink Brendan Fraser down and they have to, have to put him into someone's guts. They, they wouldn't make that. They couldn't make that. Well, because the technology doesn't exist, Damien. They could. God they damn. Could, they couldn't make a movie about Brendan Fraser shrinking down, uh, you know, to to a point where he's not microscopic, but he's kind of like the size of an ant, and he's just ramming, he's just ramming hair follicles into his his own scalp. Oh my god! That's how shrinking works, isn't it? When you when you shrink, you become a different you. Right. So when like um. What is it? So he's tiny doing it. You. So Brendan Fraser is like shoving the hair into his head once he's shrunken. Is he shru- Is he? He's ramming regular hair into his head when he's shrunken. So <laughs> he's when he's shrunken, w- no, it's so, simple. So when he he's gets shr- back to regular he's shrunken size, and he's ramming hair into his full-sized scalp's head. Scalp he's into his full-sized scalp. So he's got like what is his brain exposed and he's running around. Why would his, his brain head? be exposed? What a ridiculous thing to say. Like the, 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 all I can see is right. <laughs> If he's ramming, why would so his, his brain be exposed? Do you think like hair grows out of your brain? Well, his skull, your skull, then, right? So yeah, he's, uh, he's he's running on his own scalp. His scalp is regular size. Brendan Fraser is shrunken, right? And he's he, right. That is that what's going on here? Because I'm 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 see I'm 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 not kind of following the thread. Here. I'm seeing it differently. I thought that yeah, he take took regular hair into. It put into his his head as a shrunken man. So when he grow, you know, he gets blown back up again. He's got like he's got a full head of hair, but it's like four giant hairs. <laughs> right. Listen, listen. <laughs> this is just this is just cliffhanger. But the mountain face is his own scalp, right? <laughs> or is it right? So they've shrunken him down, no, but they've kind of like stretched listen, listen, out every their- time. Every time he hammers something into the scalp into the into the mountain wall, it's his scalp, right? And he's ha- instead of hammering in like iron it's pegs like, for him it's to not like put carabiners or anything like that. Is that ca- what for, put carabiners around and everything. Yeah, instead of him doing that, he's hammering in hair follicles. <laughs> this is all about how he's going to get the mummy three, right? Okay. <laughs> the ex- you know the w- the work he does for a role. Yeah, the, you know, you know the the role he's been promised, where Tom Cruise is going to play the mummy. So, like, explain Brendan Fraser shrunken to me. So he's got it's Brendan no... Fraser, but he's much smaller. Yeah, no, I get that. I understand that. But he doesn't have a scalp if he's climbing up his he own. He has scalp. a scalp. Why wouldn't he have a scalp? But how does he how does he have a scalp and climb up it at the same time? All right, so if when he's <laughs> shrunken down, have right? A scalp and what climb the only thing it? that they that they what? They, what? Yeah, go on. <laughs> so I'm seeing like, you know, they've got like like Brendan Fraser's scalp like adorned on this bust, right? And they've shrunken the rest of Brendan Fraser's body down. But what they've done is they've kind of rubberized the the skin of the, the of it would be in the top of his skull. So as it's shrinking down, it stretches. So he's crawling up that. So he's still connected to his full size scalp, but is a shrunken man. Is that right? Right. Okay. When you get mini- when you get miniaturized, you, your scalp like, comes it's, off. It's it's like no, it's like your little avatar of you. Right, so there's two Brendan Frasers. There's two Brendan Frasers, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you know the laws of miniaturization. <laughs> it was your, it was your minor. Oh fucking hell! <clears throat> it's a miniature you, so he can do that. Is this thing like a biological copy, or is it like a small robot, Brendan Fraser? It's like it's like a, it's like an avatar of him. Like he can see through its eyes. Right. Okay. But is like the challenge that you know, in order for Tiny Brendan to work, if Tiny Brendan dies, regular does. Brendan has to move as well. So he's trying to climb <laughs> up himself as he's trying to simulate climbing. So it's it's like it's like one shot, he's being attacked by, he's being attacked by you know germs, and then one shot he's climbing up the Eiger. <laughs> it's like a lifelong pursuit. He doesn't get past you know the back of his kneecaps because he starts from the ankle. Do you know what sci-fi film they wouldn't make? That one. Break they wouldn't on. make. <laughs> they wouldn't make a sci-fi film where Mark Wahlberg is lit in neon lights, and it's ninety minutes long, and it's just him having a, a a relaxed conversation with a friend over drinks about his thoughts about race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
They would never nice make that. Well, yeah, just that situation just wouldn't happen, would it? It wouldn't happen. No. Do you know what film, a sci-fi film they would never make? They'd never make Judge Dredd, but... It's a courtroom Dredd, drama. <laughs> Dredd's first name is Judy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you chose that name um, to keep this, this show accessible to an American audience. <laughs> Not beca- <laughs> Because I imagine, you know... It, well, it, because it, people are going to be like, well, he talked about Judge Judy. I'll, I guess I will tune in next week. I found his comments <laughs> asinine otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, coast I hope coast. they mention Dr. Phil soon. That's the thing I'm aware of. That was a George Rockland show, and we were t- discussing sci-fi movies they would never they make. They know what we were discussing. <laughs> Give some fucking credit. Okay. All right, thanks very much. They, um, they, next we'll time, be- we're talking about the stuff. The stuff. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, that's a fantastic movie from the 80s uh, where people see some white plastic coming from the ground, decide to eat it and market it. Yeah. <laughs>